Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you're here. That over there is a 2006 Mercedes-Benz CLS 500. Customer states, it has a suspension system warning indicator that's illuminated. And uh, it's a little low up front, see that? Yeah, we got a low rider Mercedes. I think the other side is good. Yeah, that side's yeah, it's still sitting a little low, but we're also got this uh, this lean towards the right over here. So uh, let's get this thing into the into the shop. Let's get it up in the air and take a gander at uh, what's going on down there, and uh, we'll see if I can fix this thing or not. Let's see what we get here. Let's put some floor protection in. What do we got? Looks like 142,245 miles on the odometer. Let's see what we got. Move it on up. Well, I know the pump's working because the bag on the right seems to be on and the ones in the rear seem, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, the, the pump's running. Let's uh, let's get this up in the air and take a look down there and see what's going on with it. Backing out the auto. Ooh, I hear power steering noise too. Lots of noises. It's a really nice Mercedes for an 06. Yeah, nice interior. I bet this thing's fast. We'll fix it, take it out on a test drive. All right, so it looks like the indicator's gone away, so I'm assuming this thing has uh, filled back up. We'll go out and visually inspect the ride height in a moment. Let's get around the uh, corner of death here. I'm not scared of it, but uh, the viewers are slightly concerned about making this turn. It's okay, we've got it under control. I'm not saying I would let anybody drive a car around that corner, but uh, I think I can navigate it with uh... Oh, that's broken. Yeah, okay, we need a window regulator. That one's making grinding noises. That's two regulators. That one works. That one works. Uh, the reason I did that is uh, because I always crack a window when a car is in the shop because I do not wish for the doors to become locked while I'm not in the car. Uh, thus locking me out of the car inside of my own shop and that would be bad. Parking's the auto. Powering down. Shouldn't have done that actually. I wanted to check the, the ride height. Let's see what it's doing here. You guys hear that? I hear something. Uh, I need light. Alright, let's try again with some lumens. I do hear some air escaping. Yeah, it looks like it's an airbag shock or an airbag strut. Yeah, she's leaking. All right, let's lift this thing up. Ah, oh, set the rack, see what's going on with this car. I bet you that bag's got a hole in it or something. Too low. Oh, it's too low to set the rack. Let me restart the engine. Maybe we can pump that bag up a little bit more. Well, yeah, while we're here, where's that hood device? There it is, a red one popping in. Z hood on Das Auto. Und Das Auto. All right, what do we got in here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we have? I'd like to learn to stop saying got. It's poor English. What do we have here? We have power steering noise and some, some halfway decent hood struts. Hang on, we're losing it. Yeah, no more messing around. Where's my hood prop? Oh, of course, the hood prop's over here in the parts washer. That's where it goes. All right, round two. What do we have here? Put that right there, that'll hold the hood. I wanna see what the deal is with this uh, power steering noise. Are we low on the fluid? Yes. Yes, we are. Now, I'm aware that that noise is not the problem that this car is here for, but it's annoying me, and uh, we're just gonna fix that right now. At least uh, temporarily. Okay. There we go. Let's just give this a couple ounces of the good stuff. Pouring things. Could have brought a bigger funnel.
cool. The pump is uh, quieting down a little bit. It's nice. Let me check that level. That looks good. You can see it right there flowing. Ooh, it's just a little bit low. Sensitive. Look at that. Okay, just a couple ounces low and it was making noise. Okie dokes, the rack is set on the passenger side. Over here on the driver's side, the rear arm is in, but the front still will not go in. The right height is still too low. So uh, we need to floor jack assist this to get the body to come up in order to, uh, there it is, in order to fit that lift arm onto the mounting bracket point. Come on, floor jack. We need you. I'm glad I got the super low profile floor jack. That, uh, that means it's definitely gonna fit, right? 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 You fit? Right there. How's that looking? Okay, there's there's metal structure there. That'll give me enough to pick up just a little bit. Moving on up. Is that it? And the survey says yes. We've reached the lift point. Right there. Alright, let's uh let's set this thing down. Anticlimactic, yep. Alright, you go back over there and uh let's go hit the button. The green subscribe button. It's a thing we do here. Whoa! What is that about? I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Yepper, I think this thing is going out of its way to try to maintain uh, ride height. Phew. But it's not working. All right, round two, green subscribe button. I think we're good. Give it the shaky, shaky treatment. Make sure it's not gonna fall down. Nope, not gonna fall. I got a new toy today. This is an induction system cleaning vessel. You put uh, a, uh, a cleaner inside of here, and then this nozzle in right here goes into your intake tube somewhere. You apply shop air, regulated pressure, you open the valve, it runs that cleaner through the nozzle, sprays it out as a super fine mist, and it will pass through the engine's intake, coating the back side of the valves, uh, the runners in the heads, everything that's inside the intake stream, it will be cleaned with the cleaner as it passes through. Very nice tool, nice equipment. We're gonna do one of those in the future. Okay, back to the task at hand, which is our Mercedes. Now that's the driver's side over there. The tire's a little chunky. Take a look at our strut on this side here. That's uh, looking pretty normal. It's air ride, so there's an airbag. Yeah, way, way up there, I think. That's the bag. Let's check this other one. Uh, what do we got? Oh, we got something leaking. Right here and right here, and that's looking like it's coming from that strut. There's some fluid. Oh yeah, you can see it very clearly on this side. It's even dripping. So it looks like the seal's blown up in this uh, air strut and uh, it is no longer maintaining the ability to hold this car up. What else is going on here? Hmm, I'm gonna check these motor mounts. The owner stated uh, they were quoted a ridiculous amount of money to replace these motor mounts. These are liquid filled mounts and looks like this one is leaking. See the, the fluid running out of it? Yeah, that's one failed mount. It's not as severe, but yes, it does need those motor mounts. Is it worth it? Yeah. I'd say a set of tires is more important than engine mounts. We're at zero 30 seconds on that inside edge. What's this one doing? Whoa, not good. We're at negative tread depth. Oh, that thing's separating, look at that. Not cool. Yeah, definitely tires. This one's flat. Yeah, that tire's flat. Or almost flat. How does this one feel? Yeah, that's that's hard. Okay. That one's flat. 
flattish. And that one's got some crazy wear to it. Okay. Yeah, I think we need a set of tires and let's see what we can do about finding a replacement uh, strut for this uh, driver's side over here. I want to let this down real quick and uh, take a peek at that strut mount and see how difficult this thing is to change. It may be fairly simple, but it may not be. Mercedes coming down, all the way down. Okay, so our strut is right here, that's coming up. Looks like our mount is right under, oh yeah, right here, okay. Electrical connection, that's the uh, connector for the, or the air supply line. Electrical connector right here. I think that might be a sensor of some sort. Okay. All right, let me go see if I can locate one of these components and, uh, and we'll go from there. Let's see, okay, there was one other thing on the list of things. The windows were one of them, check that out. The suspension thing was the biggest one and then there was something about the wipers. Either the spray doesn't work or, uh, okay, that arm doesn't work and the spray doesn't seem to work. Hmm. Okay, all right, well, let's see if I can't see what's going on with that wiper arm. Maybe it just came off, powering down again. Ding! So that uh, strut situation must be fairly common for this car because it, uh, it was available. They've got uh, several of them up in Tampa land. All right, it appears that uh, this wiper has become disconnected. Let's go ahead and take this apart. Looks like that wiper is disconnected from the linkage. So uh, let's see if I can't get in there and figure out why it has become disconnected. I think I'm gonna have to remove this. Yeah. All right, well, I'm not getting under this cowl right here until I pull these blades off. So let's go ahead and get these wiper arms removed. Oh, that one's... Hang on, what's the deal here? That one's loose right there. I hope that's just like an idler and that might be the gear because that one's still turning with it. Okay, let's pull it all the way off and see what we got. Cut. Let's see what we have. Let's pull it off and see what we have. Now these, uh, these nuts here appear to be of the 13 millimeter variety. Let's uh, get those guys broken loose. Now I wonder if this is gonna come off nicely or if I've gotta, gotta make it. Warning, do not hit glass with hammers. Watch this. This might work, it might not. See that? I pulled up on the lever, tapped on the nut, and it broke the bond between the splines on the shaft and the splines uh, on the little part right there. I'll do the same thing. No, I won't. I'll wiggle that one. And uh, that's one wiper arm removed. Now, I may be fortunate on this uh, driver's side wiper. I may not. Let's find out. Unclick. Again, I'm going to back that nut off a little bit. That way, if I do uh, give this a linear impact, it won't uh, damage the threads. Before I do that, though, I'm going to try to wiggle it. Okay, that worked. That one came up with just the wiggles. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now, I see some kind of computer thing bolted to the... Uh, Wiper cowl seems to be a typical European fashion. Let's just get this guy out of here. We don't uh, we don't need that here right now. Now, let's see what I can do about getting this uh, cowling. There, come over here. I think it should just pop up. Oh, hang on! I found a screw. Stand by. Found a screw right here. Let's see here. There it is. Is that a plastic screw? Felt like it was plastic. And I launched it. I got it. It is plastic. And it's recovered. Okay, so there's one there. That means there should be one more over here. And then there is. Pull that guy out. 
So it's got clips and screws. Uh huh. What else is holding this thing in? More clips and more screws? Sure. Okay, it's kind of loose. Let's get over to it on this side. Remove engine. Yep. You know, I keep telling myself I don't work on Mercedes. No. Yet, here I am. All right, what do we have? Here's our linkage and all that good stuff. Was that just loose? Did I really take all this off because that shaft right there was loose? Because yeah, all this is connected. Ah, oh, I thought that that was the drive shaft or the driven shaft and I thought this was the idler. It appears that's the idler. Look at this. Go a little closer. Yeah, the nut thing was just loose. That's the idler. That's the, uh, the driven shaft and all that linkage is good. All right, well, um, did all that for nothing. No worries. Let's put it back together, tighten it up, and then we're good to go. That's a confirmed fix, possibly. Well, that's embarrassing. I went through all that, did all that work for uh, for no reason. Yeah, that was a rookie maneuver, rookie mistake if I've ever seen one. Let's get these leaves out of here. I'm embarrassed. Seriously, not kidding. Can't believe I did that. That drain was clogged. <laughs> Goodbye, leaves. Goodbye, dirt. This thing is like creating dirt. It's like making fresh new soil due to all the leaves. We're gonna undo that. I know, I know, why don't we vacuum it out, I know, but this is more fun, if I can't have fun, what am I doing here, I'm going to do this the fun way, goodbye leaves, goodbye birds, okay, you know I'm actually relieved a little bit, I was cringing at the thought of how much a, a wiper transmission costs for a 2006 Mercedes. Very much so. But it uh, looks like we don't have to go down that road, so hooray. Put this thing back on, that's, that's gonna not be fun. Yeah, it's got a drain hose down here and that's a tight squeeze on the firewall. So we're already in, in uphill battle mode, I think. Yeah, let's take these grommets out. Those are in the way. Come out, other grommet. Yeah, it's got to go at an angle and hook into the windshield glass and then snap down into place. Sure. Come back. Oh, another grommet. Let's get that out of there. Put that back later interfering with my fitment. Yeah, this is not fun for me. I definitely would have preferred to have checked that nut earlier. I can't believe I made that rookie mistake on a Mercedes, nonetheless. Yeah, let's just take it all apart, and see what's going on. Foolishness. I knew better than that. Rookie maneuver on a luxury car. That one goes there, this little hose goes back in that little bracket. That clips there, one screw there, a couple grommets. Okay, we're going back together. 
I think I'm gonna steal Eric O's title. I quit. I made a rookie mistake on a luxury car. I quit. Yep, that's the video's title. Made a rookie mistake on a luxury car. I quit. Eric's gonna go, you SOB, you stole my Scotty style clickbait title. And then we're all gonna laugh. Except for the Scotty people, they're gonna be over there like, you can't do that, that's Scotty's title. Can't do that. Okay, that's the last little grommet. So the, the grommets are back on, hooray, one, two, and three. We need the two little plastic bolts. Screws. Yeah, there's one of them. Put that guy back where it lives. Cool thing about plastic screws is you don't have to screw them in, you just press them. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Watch, check this out. You put the thing in there. There. Plastic screws. Love it. Okay, driver's side wiper coming in. I'm gonna align these with the uh, the witness marks left over from the dirt on the windshield. That's gonna tell me how to clock the position of this. And I'm not aligned, hang on. I'm like one's flying off. Let's go right there. Okay. One bolt. Click. All right, now for this uh, passenger side business over here. Let's see how this is gonna go. Let's say that looks good. Feels good, looks good, it must be good. Now I'm gonna tighten these, but uh, I'm not gonna crank down on them all the way. I wanna go and run the, uh, the wiper assembly and make sure that these things uh, travel and have the appropriate amount of throw and that they park in the correct positions. But I will snug this one down just a little bit, just to make sure that those splines engage. There we go. Okay, let's go restart this thing. See what we get. Hey, they're working. All right, we're getting somewhere now. We can see clearly now. How do I turn them off? Rotate. The other rotate. I think that's it. Okay, they park. That's a good park position. How's this one look? Good park position. All right, I'm good with that. And engine shut down. Ding. Okay, so now that we're uh, satisfied with the position of this stuff, I'm gonna put some uh, some torquage on this. Uh, that way, it doesn't come loose and slip again. Go. And of course, I won't forget my little caps. There's two. Third one right here. There we go. Nice. And uh, let's see, we've got this uh, weather strip business right here that's going to go on next. I probably didn't need to remove it, but I was being hasty like rookies tend to do. 20 years later, still haven't learned my lesson. All right, that confused me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Nope, not a clue. 
It's my first day. Is that all on? That's not tucked in. That should be tucked in. Now it is tucked in. Same thing over here. Let's tuck that one in. There. Almost goodish to go. We still got. Uh, well, I have more weather stripping. I'm not going to get too crazy with this one because I think I have to take it off again when I do the strut. If I do the strut. I think I'm going to do the strut. The car is kind of not drivable. You know, I wonder if shops put people in positions when they, uh, when they have a car that's not drivable regarding the, uh, the repair costs of said not drivable car. You know, for example, let's say, let's say this strut job costs a hundred dollars and I know that they have to do it. I wonder if that motivates people to do things like charge $500, for example. And I, I just pulled those numbers out of a hat, but uh, I think you get the point. Do shops with, uh, when they're in a position of leverage over a customer, do they, uh, do they take advantage of that or do they not? That's what I'm wondering about. Right, there's one cover. Uh, that one goes on that side. Yeah, that one goes there. This one goes over here. I'm not gonna batten these down because I do have to take uh, this one off for the strut. Okay. Well, that was fun. Yeah, let's go ahead and finish off all that dirt. Goodbye, dirt. Okie doke, so we fixed the one thing. Uh, I've got to estimate the two window regulators and uh, that little strut device over there. Uh, you can see it's end of day. Yeah, it's about 540 right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and uh, close up and get on out of here. I need to not be staying at work till 7.30, 8 o'clock anymore. I did that last week. I need to stop doing that. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this video out until uh, we get some confirmation uh, on a repair and some parts for in the future. So, uh, as always, like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it was rather short. Uh, it is what it is for right now, but uh, there will be more to come uh, when it's time to repair this strut right here. So, until then, again, thank you for watching, and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Mercedes. I guess I will uh, duh, duh, cut.